Welcome back to Stadium Unplugged with a two-time Malaysian Super League Golden Boot winner with Sabah, Scott Oliver Shaw. Now, for a person who was out there scoring so many goals and then you had this injury that, you know, practically ended your career, yeah. you're still almost paying the price for that, a hip, yeah. hip injury. Yeah, um, you know, over the years, um, it just became extremely painful. Um, and it got to the point where I knew that I couldn't play at the same standards mm -hmm. that I had you know, before. Um, I've got no more cartilage in my hip. It's basically become bone on bone. Yeah. Back in my day, we didn't understand that the worst thing you can do is go out on road runs. So then during the off season, you think you would be doing the right thing to try and keep fit and would mm -hmm. go on a 10K road run. So you're pounding on the pavement, on the cement, which is the worst thing for your whole, you know, all of your sort of joints and that. And I think that did a lot of damage to me. My father has had a few hip, you know, he's is he on his second hip already, hip uh, replacement already. So it's sort of genetics and also all those years of running on the hard cement. So, you know, I retired at the age of 31, whereas if you look at footballers these days, they're playing until 36, 37. Mm. So that put me in a little bit of a spin, so to speak, because I had an anticipated playing until I was about 35. So suddenly at the age of 31, you have to retire. And I remember um, when I finally made that fateful de decision that I was going to retire, um, I had tears in my eyes because uh, I hadn't planned to retire at the age of 31. So suddenly it was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But you adapt and you move on. Let's you know. talk about that transition mm. from playing professionally to, you know, forced retirement. Yeah. How did you cope? Well, it's not easy because you go from being in the newspapers every day and people are talking about you and suddenly you are yesterday's hero. You know, and that's the reality. But like I said earlier, um, at professional football, you know, 98, 99% of us so-called journeymen, what I would call professional footballers, when we retire, we have to work. So um, all of a sudden, I met a really nice guy who became one of my best friends. His name was Andrew Verne. Um, and then we started up Coffee Bean together. Um, and I was in that for about two or three years. But the lure of football brought me back. And at that stage in Kale, futsal centres were opening everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere. So I made a little trip down here one day and uh, said, right, I've got to get back into, into football. So I sold my share in Coffee Bean, opened up my futsal centre. But as so, as so, you know, sort of many times it always happens here, you know, all of a sudden everyone opened a futsal yeah, centre. Yeah, of course. Everyone, everywhere, they were opening up everywhere. So it was time to move on again and then sports tourism. And that's, that's, uh, that's the sort of business that I've been doing now for the last five years and I really love it. Uh, we organise tours for golf, um, lawn bowls and of course football. Um, I've got my Borneo Cup, which, which is my favourite event each year. We get all the kids coming in from Australia and uh, all the different countries around Southeast Asia. So, um, and for those two weeks, we make these kids like they feel like superstars. You know, mm. we play the national anthems. They play on nice stadiums. Uh, we have tournament dinners, and we speak to them about what it takes to become a full-time professional footballer. And the kids love it. And you know, that's my favourite tournament. I take tours as well back to Australia. I've taken on Kim. On Kim Swee's team to Sydney in 2011 and to Brisbane and the Gold Coast um, at the end of last year. Uh, I've taken Felder, they went to Perth. So, yeah, it's nice to uh, be involved in these tours. It keeps me involved in football. And of course, I come here, you know, every six weeks or so and then hang out with you guys and meet my old mate Abbas and we argue on TV <laughs> about football, which is you always nice. You argue so well. <laughs> uh, I always enjoy coming here. So, we'll, I mean, we don't argue on purpose. We're just, um, you know, completely different people, but we're best mates as well. All right. So. I would think that you're more of an entrepreneur uh, than a business person. So you've got all these businesses that you've gotten yourself into yeah. and now you're in um, football tourism, I would, I would yeah. call it. What else is on the cards? <laughs> what else is on the cards? No, I'm just happy now and just... Uh, just want to see um, with my son's football, you know, help him, guide him, uh, but not push him. Mm -hmm. um, try to grow my sports tourism business because that's my passion. I really enjoy that. Um, try to see if my daughter cannot be so feisty in the future. <laughs> you know, continue coming on here. Uh, you know, I really love coming here every six weeks, and you know, just to enjoy life. Um, have my have my hip replacement. Okay. Get my golf handicap down to single single you know single figures if I can. I think I got it down to nine about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Then my hip started getting worse and worse. So I have the hip replacement. Get my golf hand, handicap down. 
start looking after myself a bit better because with my hip replacement I can't really run. So okay. continue playing in these sevens tournaments around Asia, uh, mm -hmm. as your husband does as well. <laughs> we, you know, when you when you retire and you play in these over forties and over forty fives tournaments, it's our chance to be superstars again, wow. just for that one day. So you know, continue doing that and just having a good time, Joe. If you were not a footballer, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, God knows. God knows. You know, I always love sports, so uh, maybe a journalist or something like that. You know, something involved in sports. Um, so, but for me, there was n there was never an option because I just love sports so so much. So, if I wasn't a footballer, I would hope that I would be involved in any sport. You know, apart from football, I love all sports. You know, I love golf. I love tennis. Um, what else do I love? I love, love you know sports like rugby league, cricket, yeah. Aussie rules. Rugby union is not not my sport really. It's too far too stop start for me. But mm -hmm. uh, you know I just love sport. All right. Have you written anything? Just out of curiosity. Out of curiosity. No, I haven't really. <laughs> I haven't really. I, I always say that when the time is right, I would love to write a book about my experiences in wow. Southeast Asia. But I might upset too many people. So we well, should. Then that's that. That's uh, you know the good thing about writing a bestseller because yeah. you don't have to care about what people you think. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, maybe when I'm old, I might write that. So, oh, you know, I'm sure. I've got a lot of stories there, but uh, maybe when the time is right. All right. Three words to describe Scott Aldrinshaw. I would say temperamental, <laughs> um, sentimental, mm -hmm. um, uh, and a lovable rogue. <laughs> That's four words, so anyway. We'll take that. It's okay. We're allowed. Okay. You know, you're one of our favorite guys here, so thank you, that's, that's allowed. Thank, thank you, you very thank much, you, Scott, Thanks for, for being time. on Stadium Life. Absolute it. pleasure. Thank you, Joe.